This is an interview with Paul Pulver for that Valley Historical Project. And the interviewer is Harriet Blocka, and I'm being assisted by my husband, Ken Blocka. And it's January 21st, 1999, and we're at the Elgin Public Library. We want to thank you, Paul, for giving us this interview. This uh, material will be used to interpret the history of our region. It will be used for educational purposes and maybe for some tourism. And Paul, we'd like to start out with you giving us your name, where you were born, and when, a little bit about your parents. Well, I'm Paul Pulver, and what you first thing you asked me? Yeah. Your name, name and where I'm you were Paul born. I'm Paul Pulver, and I was born on the farm of Sillyman. So, Will you tell us where that's located? On a township, just uh, in section six. And that's off of 56? Yes, yep, north of 56. You're about how many miles out of Elgin? Five and a half. Okay. Now, Paul, where were you born? I was born in that house. Right in the house. Yep. And when? Uh, 31326. Okay. And do you have brothers and sisters? I had one sister, but she died when she was 12. So you were an only child. Okay. And tell us a little bit about your parents. Well, my parents both came to Switzerland. My dad came when he was uh, four or five years old. And my mother came in 1923, and she had been, uh, she, you know, and uh, she was born in 88, 83, excuse me. And my, my dad and mother were both born in 1983. Okay. And so your parents uh, were rather, rather recent immigrants. Well, yeah, I'm one generation closer to the, uh, to, uh, uh, the European ancestry, you might say, compared to most of these guys. Uh, Beauty Cove is that sort of second generation. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, now, did your and your parents lived where you live? Yeah. And so you're a. This would be a three generation farm. Are you a century farm? Not yet. My dad bought that in 19. Uh, I mean, yeah, 19. I I think bought it in 1908. So you have a few more years to go. Yeah, it won't. It won't be here. It won't be here. But you do have a son that's on the farm. Right now with me, I don't know how long. And so if he stays, then it, it would get to be a century farm. Yeah, maybe. I doubt it very much. Okay, would you like to tell us a little bit about your education? Did you go to a country school? Yep, I had country school and we didn't have kindergarten in those days. And uh, the, the classes were so small, there was only one or two in a in a class. When I started out, there was one girl and me and, and uh, when we, and then when she moved away, I skipped, uh, let's see, fourth, you know, so how is it? Fourth, fourth, yeah, fourth grade, I, I skipped that. And I only went from third to fifth. It was quite a transition to get, learn all the arithmetic and all that. And I went to high school. Just can we stop a minute? I, I'd like to ask, where was this country school that you went well, to? Well, the, the Highland uh, Township Number Three down on 56. It's now uh, uh, the Highland Township Hall. Uh, you see it down. Yeah. Okay. You know, you know where it is. All right. Did you walk there? Yes. And would you tell me what, what, a little bit about what it was like going to a country school? Well, I think we started out. Uh, it was um, there were only about eight students, I think, and it gradually got a little bit bigger. And I think maybe at the very most we had 18. And I think uh, another thing, all the years that I went to country school, I had the same teacher. Oh, you did? And who was she? Hilda Meyer or Hilda Wolf. Hilda Wolf was your teacher yeah. for all the years you were there? Yep. Yeah. That's rather remarkable. It is. Yeah, I started school when she started teaching, and then I think after I left I, I left country school, I think she stayed on for another, I can't tell you, a year or two or something. Did she teach after she was married? Uh, not yet. I, 
Well, she moved. She moved from here. She went down Little Fork. She went to school there. Okay. So apparently, she went. My, my, I don't know. Because usually care. in those days, once you were married, then you didn't. You weren't teaching anymore. Well, you have to ask her. I can't. Okay, ask. we'll just go out, pass on that one. All yeah. right. Now yeah. go. Now you were telling about high school. Yeah, I was the youngest person to ever graduate from Elton High School. And how old were you? Two months older than than sixteen. That was. You were young. Yeah, that's true. I didn't know that for many years. They told me, but um, they found some archives or rather records. Yeah, and uh, I always, uh, they always told me that Mrs. Leo Shorey was younger, but I checked with that, and uh, that's not so. That's not so. You were the youngest. I was the youngest that ever graduated from high school. Well, then, when you graduated at 16, the world was yours. Where did you go? And what I did stayed, you do? I stayed home and helped the Edmund Farm. On the farm. Yep. So, I believe you might be like my husband. You've never lived in only one house. That's right. That's right. That, that there's not many people nowadays that have I'm only. Been one. He's never lived in only I'm one house. Oh, you lived in the old Schmidt house. Yeah. In they, yeah, he lives in the old Schmidt house. That's right. <laughs> when they run their old house, then it was very new. Yeah, yeah they built our house in 1927. Okay, uh, now I'd like to just kind of move along and you went, would you tell us a little bit about your church? No, well, I always went to Apostolic Church with the kids, uh, I mean with the folks, that's what I did. And, and that, at that time it was in Dutch Bottom? Right. Okay. And that Dutch Bottom, and that it, a little story about that which I just learned like, you know, during the World War One, the people run down anything German. And so actually, it is Dutch bottom, but then they changed the Dutch bottom, made it sound a little bit. There's no more Dutch down there than there are. Yeah. Because <laughs> they were German Swiss, weren't they? I mean, they were Swiss who spoke a, a yeah. form of German. Well, that's right. I mean. Some of the, some of the people who got really right nasty, even my 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 dad years ago. See, my dad lived on that farm with his aunt, with my aunt and and uncle, and um, they um, rather I mean had a kind of a nasty neighbor, you know. Uh, some people didn't know the difference between Swiss and German. Let's face it, there's two dang dumb lot of places. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if it's three quarters or not, but that's the truth. Okay. Now, uh, you have earlier, when we were doing a Swiss uh, conference here at the library, you gave that the man uh, some information here on this sheet, and there were some things here that I thought we should hear more about. So I would like to get into that. Okay. Uh, so you told about eggs were used to buy groceries. Would yeah. you tell about that? Yeah, I mean, they, we brought, they brought eggs in, and they brought them to Thomas store, and they brought them to Kohler's, and they were given, uh, they were given tokens, little tokens, that could be used for to buy groceries. Oh, you got a token. Now, what did that token look like? No one's talked about I that. I wish I could find one. I found one many years ago. They were little. They were, I think, copper. They were shiny. They looked like gold, but they weren't. But um, they were about the size of a dime. And it said on them, gee, I wish, gee, this would be some round country. I don't have any uh, things I lost in our place. But uh, uh, it said Thomas Store on them. Instead of paying you for the eggs, you got the tokens, and then you had to trade them in at the store. And the store you're talking about is where the historical society is, right by the park. Yeah, park and also the Kohler store, the whole Stanson store. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now tell us a little bit about what the Kohler store looked like. Well, you, that's the one I said. It's two, it, it had two levels, in it. and uh, <coughs> along the and uh, we drove along the, the aisle um, alley there, and there's a platform there, and it, that went up to the upper, uh, the higher part of the grocery store. And the higher part had the grocery, yeah. and the lower part had the clothing and clothing and uh, well, 
shoes. Clothing and shares and shoes. Now let's see. I don't know if Coles ever had shoes. Thomas was the one that had the store. I had the had the shoe store and way back and back. There was old coal back yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. You used to buy shoes there. Well, sure. And they had a special brand of shoes that they sold? Wolverine was the last ones I can remember. Yeah, that's right. The Wolverine shoes. But what was that? What kind of shoes were they selling when that giant came? That oh yeah, I remember him yet too. Uh, Robert Wobble. Yeah, I know. I wonder if that was I wonder if that wasn't Wolverine that put that up. I, I mean, uh, it's an outfit I think it was in St. Louis, Missouri, I think it came from. That's where the shoe store was. I remember so well yet they gave me a, a somewhere along the way. Uh, they gave me a cross, uh, not a cross, a jigsaw puzzle. I mean, uh, you know, mm-hmm. and that was all made up of different varieties of shoes. And there's the International Shoe Company, is what it was, and that included those. Was it out of pasteboard? I mean, cardboard? No, just, just regular, yeah, just regular. You don't have that, do you? No, I don't. <laughs> that'd be something, you know, that'd be worth the money. money. But, okay, and then at, on, uh, they, they also, uh, why would they sell so much cloth? People sold them. Right. That's very simple. <laughs> People made their clothes. Everybody, everybody had a sewing machine, and if they themselves didn't sew, they always had some ladies come in and stay there for a few days and make clothes. Fanny Friedman was one, and, and uh, whatchamacallit, um, uh, 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 Ruben Chipbox, mother, whatever her name was, she lived uptown there. Uh, no, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, I mean, eh. Uh, yeah, shucks, I should know her real well. But anyway, it would be with Mr. Shipbach and Fanny Frieden. And I'm not sure you checked that. I am not sure, no, no, if Lena Shipbach maybe sold some too. I'm not sure. But Fanny Frieden was always the one that came to my, our place. She stayed overnight and stayed there till then. And made clothes for your mother? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what kind of clothing did you men wear? Uh, we, we, uh, we had born clothes. No, we didn't have any. And they, were they overhauls? Yes, they were overhauls. Do you remember what brand? Oh, boy. That I can't tell you right now. That's okay. Um, you wrote down here there were more trees. There are more trees around Elgin now than when you were a child. Would you like to expand upon well, that? Well, I, you, I just, all right, I just, I came from the, uh, barber shop in Postville, and they showed a picture of of a, of a town. I know it's a town, but he told me one time, but I know it's Postville or not. But really, those towns are quite bare. Mm-hmm. And the trees, there were young trees that grew up, and then actually they got big and got veiled, and they died. And I suppose they're starting all over again now. Another another generation of trees. And the trees were mostly along the rivers because we're kind of on the edge of the plains, like the start. Oh of yeah, but there was a lot, a lot of trees away from the river. Up, but we had good timber and a lot of it. He overcovered. Why? Yes. Even some fairly level land. Okay. Did you cut some of your trees down? Oh sure. I mean, so, that that's a different story. We'll get into that a little later. Okay. All right. There's quite a bit here about. Pigs, hauling the pigs to town, a race. Let's let's start well, with right. hauling the pigs. Well, all right. Years ago, we didn't have trucks. And i tell you what they did. The guys that had a lot of hogs got a whole bunch of neighbors with box uh, box wagons. And I think you get about six, maybe at the most, you probably got six 250-pound hogs in, a, in one. And they had, uh, you had set up on a seat. They, they had the sides up. And they had boards over the top so it didn't jump out. And then uh, getting back about trees you know, coming in from Elgin from the south, you know. And then we, at that time, I said there's less trees. You could look you, you, at the top of the Klein Hill, you could look down over across the river, and there was always a race. People who get to the, they told me about how, how they used to race to the stockyards to see who got there first. Now, who, who, or, you haven't told, I have it here, but would you tell me who did the race? Well, I don't know who, I mean... The Norwegians and... Uh, Norwegians and the Hillmen, uh, Highland, uh, Highland people. 
Yeah, so you had a race. Did you feel... Uh, no, I, I mean, I never was in on that. I mean, you just told, you just told me, they, you, you, I mean, they, somebody showed me, said, you know, when he looked down over the hill there from the Klein Hill, that was all bare. He could see the road for long. Now it's all growing up again. You, can, you don't see much of the road anymore coming into town. So they could see the Norwegians coming, so they were going to beat them. <laughs> it was all kind of a good-natured race, I think. Uh, as a child, what do you remember uh, as an ethnic kind of relationship between the Norwegians and the Swiss? I suppose they each look down on the other. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have it about right. And what divided the, your groups? The river? I would say so, yeah. There were no, there were no Norwegians south of the river. Uh, south of the river. And the Swiss didn't marry Norwegians at no, first, no, and, and the Norwegians uh, didn't marry Swiss. That's about right. Do you remember? Uh, I, I think there was probably some, but not near as much. Uh, did you, do you remember that bridge that they, that swinging walking oh, I bridge? Sure do. I don't remember the bridge itself. I never saw it there because they, they said that washed out in 1916 or something like that. But I used to go to church on church, you know, down there, and that was not too far from there. And sometimes we had church, you know, morning and afternoon both. And I'd, I'd take off at noon you know, with a fishbowl and go down. And I remember seeing the cables laying on the ground yet. Freddie and Marty used to talk about walking across. Right, right. The Snyders, the Snyders laid, oh, there was some Swiss uh, down in there. The, 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 the Snyders. Snyders and Marty. Yeah. You don't remember ever walking across it? Oh, no, no, no. This is, 19, this is 1960. But I saw the cable laying there. When your church was, uh, your apostolic church was down at, um, uh, in the Dutch Bottom, um, you you did you stayed all day for yeah. your church service yeah. and was that every Sunday? Yes. And you came by horse. Well, some by horse and some by later by car, and in winter time come with the bobsled, and in the spring in the springtime when it was muddy, you had no buggy. And you had cheese and for lunch. No, we had uh, bread and butter and honey, and a lot of coffee, and milk. He always heated the milk. He had a big stove in the kitchen, something like a something like a, a big belly stove, you know. And he told them, but they always have prayer. Never had seen them. They uh, used to serve them. Why did you eat the milk? Huh? People drank it. They wanted their milk warm. Apparently, uh, I mean, I never, you know, I'm not a great warm milk lover myself. <laughs> 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 Not less it's oyster stew. Well, maybe. They don't, don't even drink, eat much of that. Not that I would have nothing, but you don't have it. Okay, um, then would you have a song service in the afternoon from your church? Well, if in the morning, why they thanks? Well, of course, you buy it up the, the, you know, we went to Sunday school. And the old park down there, the, the old church used to stand, you know, the stone building. That was the kitchen and the Sunday school. The big church, they moved that and moved back up here. And they moved that into town. Yeah. You don't remember when that was, do you? Yes, I do. I wonder if it was still here when I, let's see, it was, it was, uh, it was still down here in the country when I got married in the 50s, one. Mm -hmm. So I suppose it probably was moved maybe Hmm. Probably middle, 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 middle fifties or okay. late fifties. Late fifties. Could be. Yeah, you you could find you could find that from somebody else. Mm hmm Okay. Uh, was this a big improvement to have it moved into town? Did you feel? Well, the biggest trouble was the biggest thing that happened was all the the church, the Swiss church members, moved toward the river. I mean, moved to town more, and uh, and. Uh, it just just uh, the congregation got smaller down there, and then the people like the Geary, and let's see who was well, well let's see well ship off to move to town here and, and Jake Gearing and Lawrence so, Gearing so they Jake. they wanted a, a church in town so it'd be more convenient that's right that's it because that was a gravel road out there a mud road a mud, a mud road. road boy I'll tell you I can tell you stories. 
Born at, at the one time, Marie Frieden's funeral was. She, she was 18 years old when she died. And um, <clears throat> boy, I tell you, that road had broke up so bad you couldn't get through with a car or anything. And Urban Metzger had an old semi trailer, and they put the coffin in it to mm. haul it into the church. Mm. Mm. Oh, I can tell you, I'm gonna talk about mud, gee, I can tell you stories from the no end of them. Did you ever put planks in your road so you could drive through planks? the mud? Planks, good gosh. I'm, I was just uh, went through my mind this morning, I wonder how many plank spots there was between Elgin and the Four Corners. Man, oh man, I, I can tell you just about where every one of those spots were. That would be interesting. I mean, you know, they drive, you drive over it and the mud, was, the mud started to work up, you know, and man, oh man. You know, that road uh, was a terrible road every spring, and in 19, well, it must have been about 1938, uh, while I was still going to high school, when it was finally put to a grade, and probably a little later in the next And of course, that finally, um, and incidentally, talk about a road that was built. They hauled rock in, it was just unbelievable for days and days, big rock and to stabilize the road. Was that limestone? Well, it would be limestone around here, yeah. But I mean, big, they took them right out of the quarry, big, big, big rocks. And you did, oh, I'll bet you someplace there's two foot of rock. I mean, it, 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 that road stays good even to this day. With all, that road was never meant to be used by uh, those thousands and thousands of milk trucks that run over it every day, and it don't break up. Okay, very good. We needed more information on the, on those roads. Now, I'd just like to move back to the pigs again, because I would like to ask you, no one has told me before about sending the pigs on the train. Well, there was one, there was one stockyard. And there was, there was, uh, that's the there. name of that was? Shorey and Cooster. No, I was doing Shorey Brothers, excuse me. The reason I ask you these things, Paul, is I want to get it on tape. See, that's why I'm asking yeah. you. I know, but I want to ask yeah, you yeah. because I want you to put it on tape, okay? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, they they took in uh, they took in cattle and they took in hogs and took in veal calves. And uh, Ern and Al Shorey were the ones that in there. And getting back to the computer, you know, which they mentioned there something about. But the deal, they had a commutator, you know, the old, the old fashioned commutator. And uh, let's see, was it, was it Ann, I, can't, I can't remember, it was Al or Ern. They would, he'd always, he'd always run it through that commutator. Then he'd figure it out by hand, be sure the machine was right. <laughs> That's true. Didn't trust the machine. No, he did not. Well, sometimes I don't trust calculators well, either. Well, I'll tell you, if you people would forget about them, computators and, uh, uh, and all these other things and do a little more head figuring. I think we'd all be better off. Okay, and then I'd like to have you talk about, no one has told me much about the Adolf Weibel. Yeah, just uh, getting back to Shorey though, I, you didn't, I don't tell you, I uh, see the train tracks were right there and they've chased the cattle out and the hogs on the train. And I, usually the train left in the afternoon and uh, I suppose it all went to Chicago, I'm pretty sure it did. And uh, the thing was, uh, uh, back in those days, um, we had the old crank phones, you know? You know what I mean? And then I don't know what day of the week was, uh, they'd run a long, long ring, and he said, Shorty Brothers will take in veal calves tomorrow. <laughs> you know, now listen, uh, now this, there's a lot, they could only take veal calves in the summertime, you know, and it's, you know, they freeze to death, you know, otherwise. So then um, we butchered all those veal calves on the farm, put them and brought them and froze them, and they put them on the cart out up in the depot, and those, those carcasses were frozen and sent to Chicago. Fisher and Company was the ones that bought the, all the, the slaughter. What they did, they they left the hide on the cab, uh, on the cab. They gutted them, 
they put the to put the heart and the liver in a paper in a waste I mean a wax paper bag and put it in the thing and then they send it out to Chicago. That's interesting. Um, Jake Snyder told about sending turkeys to Chicago. Oh yes, you bet your life. Now I don't know. He could tell you a lot more than I remember they did, but he could tell you. Ask him. He knows more about that than I do. We I did. mean, I mean, I can remember it, but I don't know exactly what to do. Okay, now can we go to the Weibel Mill? Oh, that was right down here across the road. You probably remember that. Yeah. That was a three-story building, wasn't it? Now let's get the location because see, I I've never seen it. Well, it'd be about... I think right by the bridge, entrance to the bridge? Well, yeah, you know, that river's been chained all together. You know, the old the, uh, the old bridge was much different. It's at a different angle. Yeah, it's at a different angle. I remember angle. the old bridge. You do. You do. They see the trees over it all, and it's kind of a, yeah. kind of a, a little lane down in there. All right. And the bridge, I mean, uh, getting back to the mill, uh, it would be across the road from uh, Hanson, Hanson. Right, 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 okay, right. exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, they, um, he ground feed for people, and back in those days, they had just uh, burr mills. I know I shoveled corn into that thing myself. And uh, then... So um, call them sacks. Yeah, sacks. Yeah, sacks, yeah. Yeah, sacks now, everything up. You say that he sold some cornmeal at that? No, they, he, old Adolf, he had ground cornmeal and put it in the bag. As I was best with, the, with this paper bag. And, and, um, did, now, did you just take your corn in and, to get it done, or did he grind it and sell it to, in the stores? Very, so, sold in the stores. Okay. Yeah. And um, let's see, um, my mother... Uh, Never liked it too well for the simple reason it'd get buggy, you know, in the summertime. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you know, you know, cornmeal would do that. Now but, you can put it in the freezer, and that keeps the bugs out. Yeah, but back, but actually, the corn that got buggy was the better quality corn. Okay. Yeah, that was the better. I, I found that out just well fairly recently. What uh, the Weibel mill did cornmeal. Did it do wheat, or did anybody raise wheat? Oh, I, I, they did at one time, but that was before my time. What happened, the wheat, the wheat industry around here, they used to raise wheat, and the Hessian fly came, and that ruined the... The, the what? Hessian fly. Hessian fly. Yeah, H-E-S-S-I-O-N-A-N. And um, what do they do now about the Hessian fly? They must have chemicals that kill or something. Well, you see, back in those days, you had to uh, wait to a certain day before, a certain time of year before you could sow the wheat, yeah. you know, to get ready for the hessian flies. Okay. And then, of course, they always said about, uh, this, like I said, it's a three-story building, and um, it had elevators, you know, up above, and they always said he had a lot of dust collectors, and he said, took enough stuff out of the uh, feed, uh, feed out for himself so he could raise hogs himself. He had raised hogs there. I remember <laughs> that so well. He had, he had a bunch of hogs there, and, and they had it there. There must have been a well there. And um, that was across the road. And then um, uh, when, he, when, he put, when he wanted to feed the hogs or turn the pump on, it rang a bell, and then the hogs came running in to eat. <laughs> Okay, you, another thing you have down here is at the old Apostolic Christian Church. Um, someone mentioned that brothers founded the Baptist and the Apostolic Church. Yeah. Two brothers. M Miller, Miller. Miller brothers. And I don't know, they, they were split up between some, but that was before my time. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know, let's see, the oldest minister that I can remember there was probably Emma Moore, mm -hmm. and um, well, that be Emma Moore, and who else? Who and now your ministers, the Baptist ministers went for training, but the apostolic ones were just chosen, or were they chosen? And they just preached from yeah. their heart? Yeah. Okay. Um, now, 
in your in your apostolic church i think this is still true the women sit on one side and the men on the other yeah and you have no uh organ no okay is there anything else you'd like to tell us about it just to, the women wear um veils they did. Or, and then now uh, they, they got rid of they used to have veils with you know big black uh, lace and then they, they got rid of that some of them Especially out east and now, where the, you know, the, the ladies uh, got out in public, you know, uh, things that raised just a little bit of a uh, piece of lace, whatever it is, on their head. There. On their head. Uh, or, yeah. Okay. Um, then it said that one, there was a time when the Turkey River ran dry. Oh, definitely. When was this? Or when, uh, just approximately. Or how well, now I could tell. I could tell. Is that you. during the drought years? Well, you know the funny part of it that happened. That happened when I was going to high school. So it'd be about 1938 or so. And that's another thing. On Sunday afternoons, we didn't know uh, over noon hour. We had an hour or an hour and a half. And uh, I know the Gearing boys. That'd be Gerald and, uh, and Lawrence Jr. and Uriel and and myself. Always went over the gear, over the gear. Nope. I'll change it. Okay. That just means that that tape side, and we'll have to switch to the other. Oh yeah. And and I'll just yeah, yeah, I tell you to continue about the swimming. <laughs> yeah. So we there's a swimming hole down below the gearing farm there. Now, which gearing farm are you? Uh, uh, that's where Lawrence. Lawrence uh, gearing. No, Lawrence City no. Corporation. Okay, Lawrence. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know where that is. Yeah. Okay, and there is, we we spend many many Sunday afternoons swimming down there, and um, I know one time we um, went swimming and went uh, down, and I can I still remember real well the crows were on the riverbed and they were eating dead clams. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the interesting part, you remember, you still get on the river road there on the south side, you see where the river comes up to the up to the road there, you know, up the bank there? Mm -hmm. Okay, down below that, just about the, down, not quite as far as Martin, the water disappeared. Are it, you talking about Martin? Friedman. Friedman. And um, the water disappeared. There's a sandbar or something. It just disappeared. And, 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 and uh, then, um, what did I say about? Oh, the river. About the river. About, yeah, it was so dry. I say the, the crows were eating the clams. Mm -hmm. And um, then the next Sunday, we went down swimming. And then there was about four inches of water already. So it is a very short time. But uh, uh, I know you talked to Les Clappy and you talked to, uh, uh, what's his name? He lives over there at the place. Um, uh, but anyhow, they, they, they both said that's true. The river went dry up about Claremont too. Okay. Up around that area. Uh, you told quite a bit about the Opera House, things that other people hadn't told. Would you like to tell us about what it was like and about the mural and about the stage and balcony and the curtain? Well, yeah, I, um, to start, and first I'll just talk about the opera house itself. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it had a pool hall in the basement on Miller's and then they had steps and they went up, uh, up, uh, you know, up uh, from the, from the, uh, street, you know, and, up, uh, and um, that had a balcony all the way, or, or, I mean, it's on three sides. And um, I remember so well yet the curtain. It was a gondolier in color. It was a picture of a, an Italian a Venice a gondolier. I don't know if anybody ever remember that or not. But uh, then I don't know what happened. They tore that that balcony. Oh, incidentally, it used to be, might as well tell the whole story, uh, you know, the, the city fathers would have free movies. Mm -hmm. 
and they used to have them in the park, and then later on in the wintertime. And I remember one time, I, me and Bob Snyder happened to be up on the balcony. There's other people too, but I remember him. Right? And I, I never was so scared in all my life. Uh, Kay Kaiser was a Kay Kaiser was in the movie. It was a horror story. I mean, uh, it, was, it, was, uh, it was about. Halloween or some doggone thing. It was really it was a scary, it was a scary movie. Period. And then, like I said, later on, of course, the stage was. Well, incidentally, we, uh, uh, Helen Meyer was a coordinator, native woman, and she had a. We had operettas in school, mm -hmm. and we performed. We performed them down here in the opera house. Mm -hmm. And uh, one, uh, one of them was. Um, I remember one, one was the Three Bears, and the other one was Molly B. Jolly, and I sure wished I um, could find a book. I, I asked uh, Hilda Meyer, she said, she threw all that stuff away. <laughs> but it was, I remember my sister was the, uh, was, was the Molly in it. And I remember yet, um, I had a straw hat, another thing, my old straw hat, I mean, I'm just about, you know, Did you, way. and you sang in there? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Now I want to ask: it, w w in the opera house, was there a wildlife mural? Oh, that was on the ba in the basement. Okay. An itinerant. Uh, this was back in, of course, back in uh, uh, depression days. Thirties. An itinerant artist came and planted. Uh, uh, Painted murals all around the site. I remember one particular scene was a pheasant. It was really realistic, very, very good. And um, there were other wildlife scenes. That's the only one I happen to remember, but there was a lot more than that. What was the basement of the opera house used for? Well, it was a, it was a pool hall and a, and a, and a bar. Yeah. And a bar. Yeah. I missed that. It burned the year I came to town. Oh, I mean, just before I yeah. came to town. Well, I hadn't been in for many years either before it burned down, but um, but I remember, I mean, we used to, well, it, it was a good place to get to. Nobody got in trouble down there. Well, sure, there's an old drunk once in a while, but that's just normal. You'll find them anywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'd like to have you tell me a little bit about, well, do you remember when you got electricity? Oh, we always did have it. Oh, well, and tell about that. No, we, uh, my, my dad was going to be in a whole bar, a Dutch, a whole a neighborhood up there had electricity. We, I mean, you had, had Delco a, plants, you yes, mean? Yes, yes. Ours, they wasn't the Delco. Ours happened to be Fuller and Johnson. But the uh, big banks of batteries back in those days, the batteries were probably two foot high and yeah, probably, uh, yeah, that's right, yeah. John Grimm, yeah, yeah, John Grimm, or, yeah, yeah. So it's, that it's, was a tradition in your, in the Dutch Bottom to have uh, battery electricity. Pretty much, and even up in our neighborhood up in the hills where I live, mm -hmm. yeah, there were, there was very few, there was very few farms that didn't have electricity. Do you remember when REC came in? Yes. Okay. Do you remember about what time you got electricity? It would be uh, 40, excuse me. In the 40s? 39, and I think it was electric, uh, I mean, the juice was turned on about 1940, something like that. And, you, and you're and you quite close to 56. Maybe you got it sooner than some people that lived a long ways away from the road. Well, our our electricity didn't come from, uh, from 56. It came up the road east of our place. It, it crossed the river and came up. And we come across the timber with our lines. And it was REC. Yes. How did it change your life on the farm? Well, I can tell you a lot about that too. Um, the light bulbs were brighter. I think that my mother always complained. My neighbors always had brighter lights and brighter lights than we did. They, they had a home plant too, but but it just so happened Dad didn't put the big enough bulbs in them. But getting back to third, that was 32 volt, and um, those houses were wired for 32 volt, 
and man, they're, they're a lot heavier wire than what they put in houses now. So they're actually, actually, the old houses were built very safe. That's why they just could hook 110 volts and didn't have to rewire much. The switch is about the only thing. Can, can you remember what, the, you don't remember the first day you got your electricity and turned it on? Oh, no, it wasn't that, it wasn't that big, a, it just wasn't that big a deal. Oh, it you wasn't? Know, no, no, I mean, uh, I, we had electricity. Because you had the Delta. Okay, but were you able to do other things now when the REC came through that you weren't able to use with your Delco? No, not really. I, uh, it's kind of surprising. We had an electrical motor on our separator, and in order to bring it up to street, see 32 volt motors, you do a little slow. So you, we had a crank to get them up to speed, and once you got them up to speed, the motor kept it going. So you used the the batteries not only for the house but out in the barn. Oh, absolutely. Out in the barn too. Oh, sure. And my mother had an electric barn. She did. Yes. Oh well, then I, it wasn't as much a big a difference. For no, you. no. As I remember, uh, you know, some people had flat irons. You know, you know what they're like. I think my mother used some too. But yes, uh, I used them. But uh, these here, this is an electric iron. And uh, it, it took uh, quite a little uh, current, but oh, uh, we we charged those batteries. Uh, their uh, light plant was in the basement, and uh, batteries were too. And uh, we had to charge out the batteries once a month, uh, once a week rather, once a week. And then uh, at the very last, I remember yet uh, them old that old big mo uh, engine that we had uh, to pull the dynamo that. Uh, uh, you know, it smoked up the basement. You had to leave the door open, and you still let the smoke roll out. <laughs> there. There no, nobody ever died from carbon monoxide, though. But um, can you tell me, do you have any Indian stories from your parents, grandparents? Indian right? stories? Yes. I mean, do you remember anything? I mean, your parents, or you remember anything about Indians being in this area? Yes. Not. I mean, this is hearsay. No, I have done okay. it before, but I can tell you I tell you quite a few stories. Probably the most intriguing one was the fact that they used to bring lead down the Turkey River that they mined. The the where did they mine it? Do you know? That's a good that's a good question. When the Indians left this country, he says we are leaving everything here. And it's, it's in the highest hill between al Qaeda and West Union. At the base of it is all our baskets and all our stuff there. Now that has never been, never been, um, but um, yeah, you, you read the old history of Clayton County, they'll tell you about how the Indians brought the uh, lead down the frozen Turkey River. So uh, Do you, uh, Some people have told about that they used to make baskets. And sell them? Well, that, that I don't remember. You don't remember that, that? No. But just you know, just a side note, you hear a lot about radon, and it just so happens that this area, from here on north, is really a radon uh, area. That's with, true. With red, red, and all that is, all that is, is a uranium that has deteriorated to lead. Okay. I mean, it's, that's, it's just over many decades or centuries or maybe thousands of years, but that's, that's, where, that, that's where the radon gas is coming from. Some, um, we call this the Shinbone Valley, and I, I wish they would have called that Shinbone, the, the town Shinbone Valley. Can you tell us why it was called Shinbone Valley? I never really knew. I suppose somebody found an old Indian Shinbone. Uh, I, I mean, so there, there were there were in that field, there were Indian mounds out here where uh, McMillan's have their uh, cornfield now. Mm -hmm. There were Indian mounds. I think it was Ken mentioned that, or, or else it was Edna Gary that her mother talked about them camping along the Turkey River. Yeah, they, I, I heard that too. They'd come. Uh, once a year, whatever it was, they come up to. And they also did some burying over there on the uh, by Freedens in the in the sandy areas. 
You think yeah, it could be? I don't know. Okay. Now, World War II. Hmm. What do you remember about World War II? Probably the the, the biggest thing was Pearl Harbor. We uh, uh, we were coming home from church, and we owed my grandmother had a house out in the country. That's the house of Lawrence Gearing's farm up there. We went to their farm and moved the house up there. But my mother, grandmother lived there, and John and the family lived on the other side of the creek. And they had a radio. We didn't have any. And then just happened to were, were you not allowed to have radios well, at that time? Uh, the, I, I, people, uh, my folks <laughs> believed they didn't believe in breaking the laws, but so we didn't get a radio for some years later. But anyway, um, well, it wasn't be, it wouldn't be too long after that. But um, I remember remember Pearl Harbor, and I had to stop, and I mean, I was still going to school yet. I had to stop and think where that was, you know, I just kind of struck a note. And then, of course, um, I do remember, I, re I remember, I still remember the speech that Roosevelt gave, that they were living in to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just so happened, I always remember that, because the day after, that was on a Sunday, and the de next day I had to stay home from school and help Dad butcher hogs at home. We just strung them up in the butcher. And I remember it's cold, it's cold and snow and everything else. But How old were you at that time? Do you remember? Well, let's see. When was Pearl Harbor? Forty-one. Forty-one. Let's see. To twenty-six. Figured out. So I, I was in school. I was, in, I think, in high school. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, I was. I started school, high school in thirty-eight. All right. Did you serve in the armed forces? Or? I did not. I did not. I never. And I never, I, I, I always worked and helped all the neighbors and everything. And when the questionnaires come out, you know, I never could figure it out. Um, apparently, the neighbors spoke to have me deferred. I mean, of course, I was just the only son, too. Well, I mean, they they wanted to come and stay on the farm. Yes. That's right, yeah. Because now, um, Harlem. Harlan stayed on the farm, yeah. and Michael Jr. went to the war yeah. because they had more than one boy, and you were the only one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was probably the but, reason. But there was there was just three of us in the neighborhood that didn't go, and that was um, Albert Lee Denner and Glenn uh, Glenn Midbury and myself, and they were all only sons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, do you remember rationing books? Oh, definitely. I think it seemed like we even found one in the house over there. I have one. Yeah. You know, they had uh, stamps for shoes and sugar and coffee and, and uh, yes, you only allowed, uh, only allowed to have so many pairs of shoes in a year. But, they, but I mean, they were liberal. I think the, the most, uh, probably the most, uh, uh, I don't think rationing hurt people much except the gas rationing. Yeah. Talk a little bit about the gas rationing. No one has. Well, you were only allowed what is it? I you could probably you can find that on the archives too somewhere. But uh, they um, were yeah. only allowed so many gallons uh, in a month or or a week or whatever. And then, yeah, then uh, you could get some supplementary. I mean, I know we filled it out too. You could get them. You get an extra ration to like we're driving to church or driving to cities and all that stuff. We didn't have a tractor at that time, so, we so didn't you couldn't it. get any for. We, we used to get it for our gas for our tractor, and sometimes Dad used it to make a little side trip. Yeah, <laughs> but we didn't have a tractor at that time. So you couldn't. And there was A stamp and B that, stamp right. and C stamp. Yeah, and I think I mean you got as far as G, but I'm not quite sure. So you got different amounts of gas according to. And people like to, I remember that people like to be friends of farmers because farmers maybe couldn't. They, you, we doubled up when we went any place. We filled the cars. Yeah. Because <laughs> I remember uh, we went on a fishing trip <coughs> up north, and I, the neighbor, uh, 
uh, uh, uh, Walt Midbury and Herman Larson and and Don Page and myself, and I know they put a bunch of stamps together enough for the gas to go on a fishing trip up in northern <laughs> Wisconsin. <laughs> we do that too. Um, you haven't mentioned about your children. Would you like to tell a little bit about no, your children? Nothing. No, Just who they are. And well, Audrey is married and lives in Cedar Rapids. No, not in Marion now. And uh, she has five children. And um, Judy, of course, she's Mary Hanson. She's got three children. And um, Kathy's in Mount Pleasant. She has five children. And then David, uh, and Kent, no, he's got three. And then David's at home. Yeah. Okay. Um, if I asked you how things have changed from now, from when you were a child to now, what are the biggest changes that you see or feel heart uncomfortable with? Well, I think that mad rush. I mean, life life was hard. A lot of work and hard work. But at the same time, I think that uh, people are more satisfied and a lot less uh, peer pressure and all this stuff we got nowadays. Because uh, your grandchildren are very busy, aren't they? Yeah, they seem to be. Okay. Um, is there anything else that you... Oh, you had something about the Grim Girls Ice Cream. What on earth was that? Well, okay. Uh, the whole Sanson house, you know where it is. It's right. And right next to that was... No, but I don't know where it is. The what house? Right, right across from Don Suda, uh, right across the uh, uh, alley uh, um, uh, from Don's DX. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. right. And then, then, then the next building was the Echo office. That's All what right. that's what they printed. I remember I used to go in there. I was, I was kind of a, I guess, how should I put it? I wasn't a Klansman, but I mean, I didn't want to, I, I, I always went to myself a lot, so I always took in all the businesses and looked around, and uh, the line of, tape, uh, line of time machines, you know? Yeah. Old. Oh, tell about those, because no one has. Well, I'll tell you, I wish I could tell you, I, I, uh, Kathleen um, Strauss just died yesterday, and that is her dad. She could have probably told me more, told me more about that. But what it was, they had lead. There's a, a lot of lead uh, and hot and there's, and ah oh, gee, I, I wish I could tell you more about they neither they were plates. Well, the width of a of a column in a newspaper, and the letters were uh, super. Uh, I mean, uh, relief on that, you know, and that, mm -hmm. and they put, and they had these big trays. And they put these uh, these uh, pieces of lead in there, and uh, you know, and then they they'd run them. Uh, they they had, well, they had a roller and ink, and that's where it went. Once they were um, um, printing a paper, you know. Is there anything else? For well, you we talk, you talked about cutting trees. Yeah. I mean that. That's, uh, we cut a lot of timber. Um, that we just cut them. We had cross-cut saws. You had to cut them by hand. And uh, but the bay, but uh, this is a little beyond me. But I still saw the machine. They used to pull stumps with horses. It was a big uh, with a big uh, cable and, and horsepower. They'd anchor anchor uh, this. Uh, winch on a good stump and then hook it onto another stump, one stump or the other, soon to come. No, no, not the only, not only the one you wanted out, it wouldn't come probably. <laughs> but then later on, that's something else. Uh, I don't think anybody knows about that. When uh, we dine, I dine, I dynamite a lot of trees. We're dynamite? Uh, yeah, dynamite. Uh, these were, uh, uh, you drill, that, uh, you, that stumps out? Yeah, stumps and sometimes whole trees. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's, a, that's a whole story of itself. I could talk here for half an hour on that. Uh, they, um, you dug down around the tree and 
and then run up that took an auger it's about an inch and a half auger and you run that down and uh, underneath the tree and you would stick in uh, stick a dynamite or a stick and a half and you put a fuse in the bottom in, into the thing and uh, I mean a cap first a cap and a fuse and then stuck it in and, and um, um, stick that old end, tamp dirt around it, and you you uh, uh, frayed the, the fuse. There's black powder in it. And you put a uh, put a uh, match to it, and it would sizzle and smoke. And my doggone dog, he'd always go right up to it and smell and bark at it. But he never got killed. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty lucky. Yeah, he was. I mean, Did you ever get hurt yourself? No. You know, the only thing I had real love, of course, we were kids, and we like all like to go see what happened there. And there was always an awful strong smoke, and that you didn't want to, you didn't want to breathe that too. That'd make a headache for you. But outside of that, so uh, and uh, we cut the, we cut trees and uh, made made a lot of fence posts back in those days. That was a big job. And uh, now people don't build fences. Well, don't have near as many fences we used to have. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll still take a good old post any day. It's all gone, panda treated post, and they all die, all fall over the, in 15 minutes and seven years old. <laughs> uh, I'm checking some of these, and can you tell me about the man that had a Buick with a pipe as a bumper? Oh, that was Adolf Weibel. Okay. Yeah. And why was that? Well, that's the way those cars were back in those days. It, 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 that, that's the way cars were made. Okay. My dad, um, the first car he had was about 1923 or something like that. And that was a Dodge. And, and then got into Buicks. And so, I mean, in the wintertime, why you didn't drive your car, you jacked it up. Or, you know I mean, you what did you do? Why did you get around then? Well, but, uh, bobsleds or buggies, or wagons. And Why didn't you run the car in the winter? Uh, it's good. It's, uh, most of the car was antifreeze. All you had was that alcohol, and that stuff would boil so quick. You know, you didn't have you didn't have the stuff yet. Did you ever have a Model A Ford? No, no Ford. The only Ford we got now is a pickup. That's this for me, red. They would go through mud. <laughs> Our neighbors had one, and we always rode to school with them. Oh, yeah. We'd go through about, about anything. <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of interesting. I was just watching public television the other day. They were telling about Henry Ford, you know. And uh, he, um, he was, of course, he, he, made, he innovated a lot of things. First, he had the um, uh, first uh, assembly line. He, he invented the assembly line, and um, I don't know what uh, what those things cost, but I suppose maybe what day you sell for three hundred dollars. Something like that. And, would, and how much was gas? Three hundred dollars for the car, and how much was gas? Well, down twelve cents that I can remember. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? And I think we'll stop there. Uh, I don't want to wear you all out. You've certainly given no. us a lot of good information. I want to thank you. Yeah, well, well, I could go on for another day. <laughs> You're like Alice. When we got done with Alice Howard last night, she said, we just touched the tip of the That's iceberg. for sure. That's for sure. <laughs> okay. Well.